Under the eye-catching layer of gaming-enhancing features, the Asus ROG Rapture GTX 6000 remains one of the best dual-band Wi-Fi 6 routers that the manufacturer has developed so far, and has held that status for about two years before Asus decided to release the RTX 88U Pro. After testing both, it became clear that they're very close to being the same device, the most obvious differences being the flashy red-tinted software design and the RGB. That being said, the GTX 6000 is the first Wi-Fi 6 router from Asus to offer two 2.5 gigabit ports that can be used for dual one purposes. There's also support for OFDMA, 1024 Qom, and for the 160 MHz channel bandwidth. And of course, it's very much possible to add the Asus ROG Rapture GTX 6000 to an AI mesh network. Furthermore, the router does cater to the gaming community, so expect the usual set of gaming-related features, which include triple-level game acceleration, which is basically just a slightly enhanced QoS system, there's also the VPN fusion and the mobile game mode. All of this does sound great on paper, but let's put the GTX 6000 to the test and see how it performs. The GTX 6000 is one of the largest wireless routers that I have tested so far, and it's not just the footprint that matters, because the way Asus has positioned the four antennas is far from ideal. The amount of time I caught my shirt in one of these antennas is absolutely ridiculous. Well, at least they're removable. That red plastic does not house LEDs, they're just there for serving that gaming aesthetic. On the front of the Wi-Fi 6 router there is an array of LEDs and it remains a superior approach to the single LED found on most Wi-Fi mesh systems. A bit lower we can see the WPS and the LED on-off buttons. On the rear side there is a USB 2.0 and a USB 3.0 port for a printer or a storage device, followed by 4 gigabit LAN ports, and yes, the LAN one is a gaming port. What this means is that this port will receive a high priority when compared to other connected devices. Afterwards we are greeted by the 2.5 gigabit one port and the 2.5 gigabit LAN port which can also act as a secondary WAN port. There's also the recessed, reset button, the power switch and the power port. As expected, the router relies on passive cooling, so there are ventilation holes on the bottom and at the top within the circuit-like pattern. There are also a few on the sides, but is it enough to keep the temperature in check? I took a thermal camera and as you can see, the results are decent. Just make sure not to block the ventilation holes. I think it's good practice to always open up the wireless routers after a test, if you're a reviewer of course. And while not really an easy process due to Asus weird design decisions, I did manage to open up the case of the GTX 6000 and see the main components. You can have a look at the complete teardown of the router in the dedicated video, but I have added a quick sneak peek about what makes the GTX 6000 tick, as well as a comparison table at the end with other similar wireless routers. And once again we can see just how similar it is with the ASUS RTX 88U Pro. The ASUS ROG Rapture GTX 6000 offers a very comprehensive set of features that enhance the Wi-Fi performance. So as expected there's Wave DMA to help with any latency related issues in very crowded environments where there's lots of wireless access points and client devices. But you do need to enable it from the software. The reason why this feature is disabled by default is because there aren't as many Wi-Fi 6 client devices out there as you may think, despite the push for Wi-Fi 6E and even Wi-Fi 7 equipment, and to make use of all of the advantages that come with the newer Wi-Fi standard, you do need compatible client devices. This does hold true for the flagship features of the last Wi-Fi gen such as MooMimo and Beamforming because while this can improve the performance in certain conditions, you're not going to see any difference if the client devices don't support them. The router also supports the 160 MHz channel bandwidth and it will automatically move to DFS channels to gain a better wireless throughput. Some people have complained that the 5 GHz network would become invisible when set up to 160 MHz channel bandwidth. I experienced the same thing and I know that it is possible that there was some military radar nearby, but I checked other routers and the network was visible when using those channels. Coincidentally, the RTX 88U Pro displayed the same behavior. Lastly, I would like to mention the support for AI Mesh, which means that the router can be added to a larger mesh network where it can work either as a mesh node or as a main unit. If you watch the ASUS RTX 88U Pro review video, you already know that I am using the tools developed by Mr. Jim Salter for running multi-client stress tests that include NetBurn and Hydra. 
To get a brief idea about what's being done is that I connect five client devices to a server device and various types of traffic are being simulated. It can be browsing, 4K streaming, 1080p streaming or even voice IP. The test will show the latency which indicates if and when a task has been accomplished and based on these results we can get an idea of whether the Asus ROG Rapture GTX 6000 can handle five client devices that stream at the same time while also navigating the web and I included some light voice IP just to push things to the limit. I have added a table with the specs of the client devices and yes, some of them are from different Wi-Fi standards. The first reason for this choice is that a real network has diversity, not all clients are the same, but the second reason is simply money, the laptops and computers are expensive. I made sure that the client devices were connected to the 5 GHz network using the 80 MHz channel bandwidth. Also, these are the specifications of the server device. I do need to mention that the Zima Board 832 is the only client device that was not in the same room as the router, while the other devices were near the Asus ROG Rapture GTX 6000, a different but small distances. Here you can see the signal attenuation of each client device. The first thing that I did was run the 1080p streaming test on all client devices at the same time for 5 minutes at a time and then make an average of the results that I got after about an hour. Yeah, this test will eat up many days. In the previous video I decided that 150 milliseconds is a good limit to what could be considered passable latency for both 4K and 1080p streaming. I can be wrong so make sure to correct me if I make any mistakes. As you can see from the graph, the Wi-Fi 6 and the Wi-Fi 6E client devices remained under this limit at all times, which means that you will get a very good streaming experience on all these three client devices at the same time. The MacBook Pro deviated a bit, so you can experience some buffering from time to time, while the Wi-Fi 5 Zima board remained consistently under the limit. But it did have a sharp increase at some point. How bad is it? It should buffer less than the MacBook Pro, but it's still not a pristine performance. Moving forward, I simulated 4K streaming traffic on all client devices at the same time. And I set a 25 megabits per second limit to get that Netflix Max video quality. And things were more nuanced this time. The winner was one of the two Wi-Fi 6 client devices, while the others all shown a spike at 99%. And this means that 1% of the requests are broken for the Zima board and 5% for the rest of the client devices. I also had to check if all client devices managed to reach and maintain the 25 megabits per second limit that I put in place and it seemed that they all did. The Asus ROG Rapture GTX 6000 should be all warmed up by now, so let's add some browsing to the simultaneous 1080p streaming tests. It's worth mentioning that I made sure to simulate a fairly accurate browsing behavior. A page consists of multiple resources that load one after the other. So I moved 12 128 kilobytes of data, which is roughly 1.5 megabytes, while also adding 500 milliseconds of jitter. So there is a random pause between the page loads as it happens while browsing in real life. A very fast and furious web browsing. As you can see pretty much all client devices manage to offer a good performance 99% of the time. But we can see that the Zima board had an occasional slip while the Wi-Fi 6E client device shows its teeth again, although very rarely. This means that the web browsing doesn't really have a heavy impact on the 1080p streaming. For browsing, 1.5 seconds can be considered a very reasonable maximum after which the user needs to start reloading the page, so anything above that can be considered bad browsing experience. The good news is that all client devices remained underneath this limit while the 1080p streaming tests run at the same time, but the Wi-Fi 6E client decided to have a fit and will be problematic between 5 and 1% of the time. Now let's put some more strain on the Asus ROG Rapture GTX 6000 by including voice over IP, but only on a single client device to retain some realism. And I admit that I didn't expect a sprinkle of voice over IP to have such a noticeable impact, but it did. On the Lenovo laptop and the Wi-Fi 6C client device displayed some spikes about 1% of the time, which can be translated to occasional buffering, while the other client devices were also pushed to the limits. The browsing experience was still fine and no client device was pushed over the 1.5 seconds limit, so you can take a call, furiously web browse on 5 client devices and also stream 1080p footage without any major issues. 4K streaming is more demanding than 1080p, so the results were already a tiny bit worse, but adding web browsing in the mix will show some cracks, at least using some client devices. 
The Zima board could not keep up, while the rest of the client devices managed to remain underneath the arbitrary limit that I put in place for the majority of time. The MacBook Pro and the Wi-Fi 6C PC will experience issues 1% of the time, which translates into very occasional buffering. As you can see from the graph, all 5 client devices remained underneath the 1.5 seconds limit. So no user that browses sites in a slightly unhinged manner should experience any issues. Have all the client devices managed to reach and maintain the 25 megabits per second limit? Not really, because two client devices stopped at 24.9 megabits per second. Not a terrible result, but it just confirms what we have already seen on the latency graphs. For the single client testing procedure, I connected three client devices to the 5 GHz network, two are Wi-Fi 5 and one is Wi-Fi 6, first using the 160 MHz channel bandwidth, afterwards switching to the 80 MHz. The server device had a 2.5 gigabit port, so there was no limitation in place. And I used iPerf as the tool for testing. Then I checked the throughput upstream and downstream at various distances while also taking into account the signal attenuation, as shown by the client device. This is extremely important because following the signal attenuation values, you can actually reproduce the same results at your home, while the distance is a far less useful metric. Why do other reviewers still cling on distance as the main metric? Because it's easier to do so. Any other metric that's added requires more testing time. So here are the results of the tests and you can pause at any time to have a better look. I did add some long-term testing results in direct comparison with the RTX 88U Pro and if you've seen the previous review video, you'll notice that the results are different. What happened? I initially tested the GTX 6000 more than a year ago and since then Asus has released several updates significantly improving the performance of the router. So I simply retested the router last week and these are the fresh new results. Unlike the TP-Link Archer AX3200 which had two WAN ports but didn't support failover or link aggregation, the Asus ROG Rapture GTX 6000 does offer some dual WAN features so I decided to set up the secondary 2.5 gigabit port as a second WAN port. I enabled the failover mode and pinged two websites continuously. I also made sure that both WAN ports had an active internet connection then I simply disconnected the main link. This way, I could see how long it takes for the router to switch to the secondary connection. Two packets were lost, so it takes about a couple of seconds for the switch to be accomplished. Then I reconnected the main link and waited for the fallback to switch from the secondary link. As you can see, it took about a second to get a successful internet connection. Since we're dealing with an ROG wireless router, the color palette for the mobile app is a bit different. It's mostly red. But the animated circular area is still in the middle, it allows you to change the color of the LED, to check the real-time traffic, the connected clients, and more. Underneath you can also see the AI mesh infrastructure, includes the possibility to optimize an existing network, and the third option is called the mobile game mode. It's pretty much the same system as seen on the RTX 86U, which means that when you enable it, the mobile device will get the highest priority, and it will also show some important status info such as the ping, the ping deviation and the packet loss. At the top, next to the connection statistics, there's an icon for the QoS which, when pressed, it will ask which applications you would like to prioritize. Since it's part of the AI protection, you do need to allow Trend Micro to collect some info. The Insights section remains available and it has some suggestions on how to make the network more secure and optimized. And then there's the Family section where you can choose a preset type of profile or create a custom one and then select the devices which will have the filters applied. Lastly, it's possible to access the Settings area where you can create an AI mesh network, check the AI protection status and configure the way it functions. And I see that we get the malicious website blocking service, the two-way IPS, and the infected device prevention and blocking. Neither are really at the level of Suricata or Snort, but it's still quite effective. Moving forward, we see the VPN section and the Asus ROG Rapture GTX 6000 does support PPTP, IPsec and WireGuard. Additionally, there's the VPN Fusion which allows the user to set up multiple types of VPNs that are then applied to different client devices. Since the router pertains to gamers, the idea would be to set a VPN for gaming devices so that the player goes to the server they want, but be careful that it is possible to receive a ban. 
The Instant Guard app is also present and it's a great way to keep your connection secure outside your home by creating a tunnel back to your home router. And I should also mention the support for the privacy nightmares, Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. The layout of the web-based interface is somewhat similar to the usual graphic interface that we get with the other Asus routers. But the Asus ROG Rapture GTA 6000 is a gaming router. So not only the router itself has an unusual design, but the interface is also flashy and a bit tacky. One of the new elements is the game radar, which shows a fairly comprehensive list of the most popular games each displaying its available location servers, along with the ping status. Most of the settings are pretty much identical to what you get on the app, but there are a few exceptions. For example, the parental control approach is a little bit different since there are no age-based profiles, and the wireless settings have received a professional section which goes far more in-depth than what the app has to offer. Furthermore, the One section is also more complex, offering a way to set up a dual one connection, to set up a virtual server, port forwarding, as well as net pass-through. That's pretty much it about the software experience, so let's also have a look at the power consumption of the GTA 6000. Is there a point to the Asus ROG Rapture GTA 6000, or should you just get a cheaper device and call it a day? Or, if the 2.5 gigabit port as well as the gaming features are so important, why not just go for the RT-AX86U Pro? As you will see in a future video, the RT-AX86U Pro offers a phenomenal performance as well, so the Asus ROG Rapture GTA 6000 is justified only if you're after that extra bit of Wi-Fi performance. Is it justified in terms of cost? Not if you're on a budget, otherwise, the sky is the limit. Before ending the video, don't forget to make sure to let me know in the comments section if you want me to test any specific device. And I will see you next time.